Hey guys, welcome to our Buffy episode. I'm Aget. And I'm Sydney. Today's episode is brought to you by our very own Premium Whistle, where they like to keep things simple. This week's specials are overpriced tea and lukewarm coffee. And in studio today, we're lucky to have Buffy Summers and Cordelia Chase from the hit series Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Welcome, ladies. Such an honor. Thank you. Happy to be here. And here to interview these two wonderful ladies, contest winner and super fan of the show, Johnny Appleseed. Johnny, we're so very excited for you to be here with us, and we can't wait to hear what questions you have for the girls. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for letting me be here. I guess we'll get right into the questions then. Viewers know that the two of you have had somewhat of a complicated past in these past few years, but you seem to be doing pretty well these days. What really happened behind closed doors in Sunnydale? You can say that again. From the moment I met Cordelia, it was clear we were quite similar, you know? Not to say that the other girls in Sunnydale are any different, but coming from LA and all, I could tell Cordelia was more in touch with that, let's call it Cali girl feminine side. Brilliant, you brought that up, Buffy. I wanted to talk to you both about your presentation on the show. There's no denying the show was met, you know, with some controversy regarding its labeling as a feminist show. Do you think Buffy is a feminist show? Oh, for sure. Are you kidding me? Have you seen this girl kick ass? B couldn't be a better example for all the young girls out there. Cords, you deaf have something to sh teach the girls out there, too. I've never seen someone rule a school like this one does. Buffy, you're definitely a role model for young girls, and you certainly face men who want to challenge that. People like Caleb, for example. Who? I'm just kidding. Yeah, he was a sexist pig. Wasn't that awesome, though, when she slayed him right in the balls when he said she didn't have any? It's never okay for men to underestimate women. I think that's an important message we try to share. I may be blonde and wear tight skirts and look cute, but I'll never let you forget how tough I am. And how did you get so tough? How does a young, petite girl like you learn to fight so well? A lot of training, let me tell you. It's exhausting, but so rewarding. I can imagine. Gianna Belafonte once wrote that today's feminist thinkers care about their bodies and themselves. Do you think this to be true? Well, there's truth in that statement, but I think that's, you know, quite reductive. We care about so much more than just ourselves. I'm the one who helped Buffy ease into Sunnydale High, aren't I? And who knows where she'd be right now if I hadn't shared my textbook with her on the first day. And I mean, my profession in itself proves that I care about more than just me, doesn't it? Yes, but dig deeper. Are we talking about individual or collective empowerment? You just said training is rewarding, but you're the only slayer out there, so how do you continue to be an empowering figure to the collective? What do you think people are relating to with you? I'm still your average teenager. I've had heart troubles, academic troubles, and I have to go to high school just like everyone else does. I'm just trying to show that you can do both. Be a girl, but also a fighter. And how do you feel about the ways in which you represent yourselves? Are you concerned, you know, with wardrobe and the reading of yourselves that you might offer viewers? Well, there's nothing wrong with looking hot. Part of empowerment is feeling sexy from the inside out. Don't think I'm wearing these designer trends for any boys. This short skirt is sexy, yes, but most importantly, it's trendy. And staying on trends is so important for anyone who's anyone. If anything, I'm doing everyone a favor by looking this good. We all like looking at nice things, don't we? Why do you think they even have museums? Yeah, huh. Would you, uh, would you say the show's production team encourages you to be more visually sexual than you normally would? <laughs> Do you remember when Rilla was a dominatrix in season three? That was hilarious. And I think the audience loved it. Sex sells. And yeah, I've worn my fair share of leather too, but that's just kind of a slaying uniform. So you're saying you don't find it reductive and demeaning to women who are being sexualized to satisfy the threefold male gaze? You know, either from behind the camera, people around you in the moment, and even, obviously, the audience, you know, will be watching you once episodes are aired. Cordelia, do you ever feel like you're being reduced to just being, you know, the hot popular one? Well, I know how to turn it on and off. Every woman does. Some just do it better than others. I'm well aware that I'm being watched and judged for my appearance. We learned about this woman in class, uh, Laura Mulvey, and she said, and I quote, in a world ordered by sexual imbalance, pleasure in looking has been split between active male and passive female. And I mean, sure, we style ourselves accordingly, but I'm not mad about it. It's normal. We all, male or female, love watching the hot character in any film or TV show. If anything, getting to be her is, you know, quite the honor. Buffy? We've definitely gotten comments about our clothing, and I just think that's stemming from a place of sexism and ignorance. 
Just because I choose to wear spaghetti straps or a mini skirt doesn't mean I'm asking men to look at me and judge me for my sexual potential. And I can't help the fact that I'm blonde. What am I supposed to do? Dye it brown? Will that make a difference? No, because I'll still be the same person, won't I? All I can say is stop making assumptions about what the outside of a person reflects about what's inside them. Yeah, so on the topic of sexuality, you don't really shy away from sex on the show, do you? No, I think it's important to, you know, show that too. Every girl goes through those emotions, and we all lose our virginity at some point. My experience with Angel might have been less than ideal, but that's exactly why I didn't shy away from broadcasting it. It was with someone I thought I loved, and, you know, it wasn't full, a full-on sex tape or anything. Just an implied, it's the next morning, we're in a bed together, and the last thing you saw was us getting pretty heated. Yes, I think it's so brilliant is that on your show, you know, you present the difficulties of growing up. There's an interesting tension, though, where the fans want to see those fight scenes, but also care about the romance and drama associated with teen life. I mean, I agree. I think that femininity is just that, being both a fighter and a lover. Yes, back to the topic of feminism. We certainly covered the topic about fighting against misogynistic violence, but moving into the idea of third-wave feminism, we begin to notice the show may not have, you know, may not be very feminist in representing a variety of women from different ethnic, cultural, sexual, I mean, you name it, backgrounds. Unfortunately, I was told that Kendra couldn't make it today because she's with her stepsister, Beyonce, but the studio did get a studio recording. Here is what she has to say. I'm all about girl power and proud to have been able to represent black girl magic through beauty and strength. Maybe it's just a sign of the times, but the show is truly underrepresented. The few cases we did see colored folks in the cast, they were usually evil or out of to cause harm. I understand that times are changing and believe that if the show had been produced now in 2017, different considerations would have been made. All right. Thank you, Kendra. Girls, any thoughts? Was this sentiment uh, felt within the cast? I guess, yeah. In terms of ethnic diversity, we may be lacking a bit. Well, I mean, Jazz is British. Huh. And what about, uh, what about sexual diversity? Were Willow and Tara encouraged to pursue their romance to satisfy the male gaze, or was that authentic? Oh my god, there's no denying the chemistry between Willow and Tara. As her best friend, I can assure you that was 100% real. There's a lot of love there. Alright, I'm being told to wrap it up. Uh, that's a nice note to end on then. A lot, of, a lot of love in Buffy and a lot of love from the studio. Buffy Cordelia, thank you so much for letting me interview you and for joining us in the studio. So thank you for listening, and, you know, thanks, guys. Sydney and Agat signing off here. We'll see you soon. All right, thanks, Johnny Appleseed, and thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll see you guys for episode two.